I like my phones like I like my bananas. Bendy. And right now, the number of foldable phones is absolutely exploding with options from Samsung, Google, Oppo, Motorola, and Honor, just to name a few. I've reviewed all of the Bendy blowers that have made it to the UK so far, and here's a closer look at my favourites, as well as some flexible delights that you can expect to hit Blighty later in 2023. And for more on the latest and greatest and bendiest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So let's start with the more compact flip style foldables like this here, Motorola Razr 2022. This thing is ridiculously tiny when it's folded up, so even squeezing it into skinny jeans isn't a prostate troubling experience. Thanks to that outer display, you can check your notifications and even use all of your apps, kind of, without having to bother opening it up. However, once unfurled, the Razer 2022 serves up a sizable 6.7 inch AMOLED screen for playing games, enjoying a bit of the Netflixes, whatever you fancy. Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is in charge, so this phone can handle Genshin Impact, PUBG, any Android title you throw at it without breaking a sweat. For your camera shenanigans, you've got a 50 megapixel primary sensor with optical image stabilization, as well as an ultra wide 13 meg shooter. That main sensor can also be used for selfies and it can record up to 8K resolution video, making it both flexible and also powerful. So limited battery life aside, the Motorola Razr 2022 is an all-round blinder and you can grab yourself one right now in Blighty for just 800 pund. And if you're tempted, there's a full review of the Moto Razr and all the other foldable phones in this roundup live right now on Techspert. Now one possible reason for that reduced price is the fact that Motorola is said to be launching a fresh new bendy phone just this week, the Moto Razr 40 Ultra. Most of the specs for the 40 Ultra are likely to remain the same, with a slight boost to the battery size and charging speeds. You can expect the same Snapdragon smarts and the same mighty AMOLED screen packed inside. So what's actually changed? Well, the external screen is said to have grown to fill that front end, making it even better for mucking about with apps. I'll hopefully be bringing you a full unboxing and review of that bad boy imminently. Now another brilliant bendy blower that's similar to that Motorola Razr smartphone is Oppo's excellent Find N2 Flip, which you can snaffle right here in Blighty for about 850 quid. This stinky bendy blower magically expands in your hand to a proud 6.8 incher, with only a subtle bit of crease action thanks to Oppo's very clever ass Flexion hinge. That internal display is bright and punchy, while you also get a ruddy huge cover screen with a proper aspect ratio for running apps. It's just a shame, therefore, that you can't actually run any apps on it. You do have a small selection of widgets, including a calendar and a timer, and you can also get snarled at by a malevolent bunny, so that's always great. But the good news is that Oppo has already updated that cover display, so now you can reply to any messages that pop up using speech to text, and there's also a fresh new Spotify widget. So here's hoping that Oppo continues to update and improve the Find and 2 Flip with these kind of features. The Find N2 Flip also boasts enough grunt to run the latest games, you've got superb battery life for a compact foldable, and some pretty decent camera tech too, so overall I like it a lot. Samsung also offers its own version of a compact foldable phone, the Galaxy Z Flip 4, which can be yours for around a grand. This serves up a similar design to the Moto and Oppo efforts, but with Samsung's One UI launcher slapped on top of Android. The 6.7 inch internal OLED is an absolute beaut as usual, despite the all too obvious crease, while you once again have a dinky external display for checking notifications and the like. Again, it's not as flexible as that bigger Motorola cover screen, but it still comes in handy. Performance is solid, even for gaming, while the Z Flip 4 also packs a pretty decent 12 meg camera for snapping your existence, although in more testing conditions it does fall over a bit. And impressively, the Z Flip 4 is also IPX8 water resistant, which is ridiculously ruddy rare for a bendy blower. So it's perfect if you want a foldable, flexible friend for rocking around the pool. It's only the not exactly fantastic battery life, some light software jank, and the £1,000 asking price that prevent me from merrily recommending it to absolutely everyone. Now, if you'd rather have a proper beefcake that actually unfurls into a tablet style device, well, check out Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 4. This latest model is slightly slimmer and lighter than the previous generation, but it is still a proper pocket filler and it weighs 263 grams, so it ain't exactly a lightweight. The Z Fold 4 is once again IPX8 water resistant and that exterior is pretty tough thanks to the aluminium frame and the Victus glass. 
Android is, as always, smothered with Samsung's One UI launcher for better or for worse. Customization options are good, with the video wallpaper feature a particular highlight. The 6.2-inch dynamic AMOLED cover screen is a crisp 120Hz beast, while the 7.6-inch interior screen is once again AMOLED tech, but this time boasting a supremely sharp Quad HD Plus resolution. Plus you've got a camouflaged under-display selfie cam, giving you a full-view finish. And certainly proper good if you fancy a bit of multitasking. So you can check out a web page while you're writing a message, or watch some bold tech twat on YouTube while you compose a sonnet. Whatever you fancy. Performance again comes courtesy of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, so gaming is a breezy experience. Of course, the 4400mAh dual cell battery means that you are limited to around 5 hours of screen on time a day. And that wired charging does max out at just 25 watts, although at least you've got 15 watt wireless charging support, which is rather ruddy nice. And as for that camera tech, well, the triple lens setup, captained by a 50 meg primary sensor with OIS, isn't as good as those S23 shooters, but as long as the lighting isn't too dim, you'll generally get good looking pics from that main cam, plus you've got the ultra wide and telephoto snappers, while the Z Fold 4 can also capture up to 8K resolution video. A similar but cheaper alternative to that Samsung Galaxy Z Fold is this here Honor Magic VS, which is just as massive and hefty, but it does actually fully fold with no awkward gap thanks to an improved hinge mechanism. Although, unlike Samsung's brick, there is no water resistance here. You've once again got a full HD OLED with 120Hz refresh slapped on the outside, with a 7.9 inch OLED squirreled away inside. And that massive panel is a sharp and poppy stunner, but this time the refresh rate does max out at just 90Hz. Not that my knackered old peepers can really tell the difference between 90 and 120Hz. The Magic OS launcher is a tad more janky and not as well set up for foldable phones as One UI, so the overall experience feels a bit more budget. But you do get that same Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 performance, surprise surprise. And battery life is a massive highlight here thanks to the almighty 5000mAh cells, so certainly if longevity is a priority for you then the Honor Magic VS will satisfy. You've also got 66 watt wired charger where you do finally drain the bugger, although sadly there's no wireless charging support. That camera tech is comparable to the Z Fold 4, again with ultra wide and telephoto options, and again limited in low light shooting and more taxing circumstances. So overall, while I prefer the design and the battery life, not to mention the price tag of the Honor Magic VS, Samsung definitely has the advantage when it comes to the water resistance, the wireless charging, and the less janky software. Now one foldable phone I've only briefly fondled so far is Huawei's impressive new bendy blower, the Mate X3. This is one of the most impressively skinny full-sized foldables, yet despite its slender design, you've got a 4800mAh battery with 66 watt wide and 50 watt wireless charging. That 50 meg ultravision camera should be a belter, while the OLED displays are bright and tasty. And hey, you'll never guess, it's once again powered by the exceedingly popular Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. However, as with all Huawei smartphones, regrettably there's no hot Google action on board, and also there's the small matter of the fact that it costs 2000 GBPs, which is, I mean, just kind of shit. So, besides that Motorola Razr 40 Ultra, what other flexible phones can we expect to see later in 2023? Well, next month we'll have the global release of Google's Pixel Fold, another savings drainer like the Huawei Mate X3, except this time it unsurprisingly has all that Google shenanigans stuffed inside. The price is still pant-fillingly horrifying though, so unless your daddy pot owns an emerald mine, you probably won't be getting one of them. Alternatively, if you want to hang on for Samsung's latest flexible wonders, you'll have to be patient. The Galaxy Z Fold 5 and Z Flip 5 aren't expected to emerge before August. To catch up with other bendy rivals from 2023, I'm expecting a much bigger cover display and a re-engineered notch to eliminate that awkward gappy gap. And hopefully you'll have some good camera tech that's on par with the rather good S23 blowers. And then there's the much-hyped OnePlus foldable, which will likely be based on the Oppo Find N2, another phone which was heavily inspired by Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold. Sadly, the Oppo Find N2 never actually made it outside of China, so at least this OnePlus foldable will be our best alternative. Stay tuned again, hopefully for a full unboxing and review of all of these bad boys. So that right there is my pick of the very best foldable phones I've personally tested and reviewed that you can grab right now in 2023. Be great to hear your thoughts down below though if you've actually used any of these bendy blows as your own full-time smartphone. Definitely please hit us up with your mini review down below. 
and which flexible mobiles are you most looking forward to. In the meantime, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest, greatest, bendiest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.